line of credit or credit card or both? That is the question. In this video, I'm going to discuss two very different lending products, business lines of credit and business credit cards. I'm going to cover how hard of a process it is to obtain, what is the appropriate use of each, and the advantages and disadvantages of both. What's up everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Mystery of Money. On this channel, I focus on everything money as it pertains to business, personal finance, or investing. If that sounds like it's interesting or something you might want to check out in the future, start now by tapping that like button, which tells me you want to hear about more topics. Thank you so much as it really helps out the channel. Now onto the topic. As far as the ease of obtaining either one of these products, you have to look at the level of complexity. In the world of finance, there are so many examples of business credit cards. Chase, Capital One, American Express, Bank of America, and so many more, including from your local bank. They all have very similar terms and rewards. A credit card is mostly dependent on your personal credit score and has an average interest rate of around 16%. This high rate is because of the riskiness of the product. There is no collateral or anything to repossess if you stop paying. You will have to sign a personal guarantee on most of these cards, and in that case, they may take personal assets in some cases. The process probably only amounts to a short application and a credit check. Check out this video here where I discuss the differences between Chase and Capital One. A line of credit will be more involved with additional paperwork. You may have to provide things such as tax returns, personal financial statements, or any internal prepared financial reports that you may have. Any bank or lender will also require most of the time a personal and a business guarantee. With a line of credit, most of the time there's a security agreement. What that does is it secures the business assets to that loan or line of credit in the event of default, then the bank can come after the assets of the business. The bank is gonna look over your cash flow or your ability to pay and make sure that you're a good candidate for a line of credit. So now on to an appropriate use. The best uses for credit card purchases are things that you intend to pay off within the month you charge them. Gas, utilities, some inventory, and other small value transactions are best suited for this use. Credit cards do have a cash option, but it is a usually a very high rate of interest and there are fees associated with borrowing the money. Lines of credit are more useful for purchases that you are going to pay off over the next year. Lines of credit can also be used for timing differences. If you purchase inventory on day one, sell it to your customer but don't get paid for several days after that, that's a timing difference in which you can use the line of credit for normal business operations. The other situation is you may have employees. So those employees are providing services for your customers. You are paying those employees on the day they provide the service or at least in the same week, but you may provide payment terms to your customers such as two or three weeks to repay you. A line of credit can also be used as a buffer on your checking account. This would be in case you would write a check for the higher than your balance in your account. It would provide overdraft protection so you didn't occur any other fees in your account. Lines of credit can also be used in the short term, if you have an inventory or goods that you would like to buy and say there's a good discount on them, you can purchase in bulk and pay over time versus having to pay all at once with cash. And if the vendor doesn't take credit card, this may be your only option. So now the benefits and disadvantages of each. Like personal credit cards, business credit cards terms are very similar. Each one has a grace period, which means anything that you buy today, you don't start paying for 30 to 45 days and no interest is accrued or charged during that time. The line of credit is different in the fact that the day you charge your purchase or you advance the line, you begin to owe interest. Or in banking terms, it begins to accrue. From that first dollar to the max credit amount you have for your line of credit, you will pay interest from day one. Well, you're probably thinking, who would use a line of credit instead of a credit card when you have to pay interest from day one? And while you're right, there are some vendors that do not accept credit cards. It's hard to imagine anyone not taking credit card these days but the important thing to remember is that while you love the free cash back or airline miles, the vendor or your supplier is charged a fee every time they process your credit card. They're legally not allowed to pass this fee on to you as a customer, so at the bottom line, it hits their pocket. But you're probably asking yourself, why don't they just increase the prices to compete? Good question, but they also have to worry about you going to another supplier that may be able to give you the same product cheaper. It's a delicate balance with keeping prices high enough to make a profit, but not too high to drive away demand. All of the signs that you see along the highway that give you a discount for cash for paying for gas, all they're doing is avoiding this fee. With all that being said, there's no real verses here. One product is not superior to the other, just used in different or possibly similar ways. I actually suggest that most small businesses have both and utilize them in the best possible way to maximize benefits. If you can purchase from a supplier with a credit card, 
and get a cash bonus, do it. Then in 30 to 45 days, if you're not able to pay it back, advance the line of credit, pay off the credit card, and you may pay some interest until your product sells, but it'll be much less than the 16% on credit card. One thing to remember is that debt is not good or bad. It's only a tool. Like a hammer, it can either build a building or tear it down. It all depends on how you use it. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you post them below. I wish you the best in your business, and until next time, have a great day.